This is Cyberpunk 2077 and it looks absolutely fantastic. And of course, sure enough, if you grab some of the latest high-end hardware, you can run this thing like a dream, get all of that RTX action enabled and have an experience that is truly next gen. But what if you're rocking an older system? Maybe something like an i5 6600K, a GTX 1060 graphics card? That is exactly the question I set out to find the answer for. And in this video, sponsored by Nvidia, we're going to show you what Cyberpunk runs like on an older system and then show you what happens if you upgrade to a new Ampere graphics card not only in terms of frame rate but in terms of visuals, ray tracing, DLSS, it's all covered here. So what we're going to do here today in this video is essentially very quickly build a PC that you guys actually have and are watching this on right now. So this is going off of the Steam hardware survey which if you haven't seen it before is actually pretty cool because you can see what people actually have in their gaming rigs and we found out that the most popular gaming graphics card is the G. GTX 1060, a lot of people have that, and then around about 42% I believe of people are still rocking a quad-core CPU. So this is the Core i5-6600K, and fundamentally this is an overclockable quad-core CPU. So what we're going to do then is build up this system inside this P600A. If you do want to see a full more modern build guide by the way, you can find that in the top right corner of your screen. We're going to get Cyberpunk installed, we're going to see how everything performs, and then hopefully show you that even if you have an older system, upgrading that graphics card is going to be key to actually getting the best performance in Cyberpunk. At least I certainly hope that's what happens. If it doesn't, I'm going to have egg on my face now, aren't I? A massive thank you, by the way, to NVIDIA for actually sponsoring this video and sending out all of the GPUs and things that actually made it possible. And also a special shout out to Andy from eTechnics, as I didn't have a 1060 and he answered the call, sent this one out with a couple of days notice. Andy, you're a legend, go check him out with that link down below. So let's get rid of this 2020 hardware for a second and actually start our PC, because it's time to talk about our platform. Do you remember Z... what even... Z270? God, is it really, has it really been that long? I honestly think this looks a little bit better than some of the motherboards you get now. Because they've just got a bit boring, a bit stale, a bit overbuilt, all black. Whereas this is a whole lot lighter. This was a very high-end board at the time. But you can see you've got some like silvery grey accents. It just looks a little bit more interesting to me. I mean, it really does show though just how far behind, I guess, Intel have come. They were just slacking. I mean, this CPU looks exactly the same as pretty much all of the others that have come out in the last, what, four or five years? It's a quad-core chip. It's only when AMD actually gave them a little bit of a kick up the bum that things start to change. But having said that, I mean, this was the gaming chip to have at the time. It was overclockable and it didn't really matter what you wanted to play on this thing. It could handle it in spades. It was awesome. And that's exactly why you don't necessarily need to upgrade your CPU because if it works for gaming and that's what you use your PC for, why spend more on something you don't need? You need a new motherboard as well. Get me some of that click action. Love is not the drug. It is slossing in RAM. There are so many cables in this system already that getting the motherboard in might be slightly tricky. It's like a weird, weird game here of operation. Oh, so there you go, look. You can see just what I mean about that motherboard. I don't know, it's not like drastically different, but I think at least it has a little bit of its own style. Rightio then, I think this means we can actually have a look at our 1060. And this is a card I've never actually seen before. This is a AORS one from Gigabyte. I'll tell you what, that's really light actually. And you've got a little bit of an orange accent on there. That's a pretty good looking card. And that's a good looking system, isn't it? You can definitely tell it's a little bit older, as I say, just because there's a bit less stuff in there. But I mean, it's still looking pretty fine. I like that a lot. We've even got a little bit of braided cable action going on here to complete the look. I mean, I hope it works. This, is, uh, this has not been tested in quite a long time. So if anything's dead, uh, let's grab a monitor. This is 4K, but I mean, I think that's probably a bit optimistic. Very, very nervous about this. No RGB, which is a little bit of a shame, but there isn't an addressable RGB header on this board. So, uh, 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 hey! I have a feeling that we can actually get some RGB on this case though. Yes, and you get the RGB. There you go, look. Team Green! Oh, no Wi-Fi though. No Wi-Fi. I'll tell you what then, leave it with me. I will get Cyberpunk installed and then we can actually start our testing, which for me is going to be a couple of hours, but for you should be about now. Here we are then. I'm incredibly excited. I've not actually yet started this game. This will be the live reaction, I guess. You can tell I'm being serious because I've got my headphones on. 
Let's start by having a look at the settings menu. Um, let's go over to graphics though, as we've got a few different presets. We've got high, ultra, we've got medium, yes, low, custom, all of the usual stuff. We've got field of view. Whoa, okay. That is a lot of settings. Let's start off with medium though. That's probably quite a good area. I've set the FOV to 90. But the main things really that you are gonna miss out on with a setup like this is ray tracing. But then more notably is DLSS on the Pascal series of cards, of course, you don't get this. So you don't get that deep learning super sampling tech, which means that your frame rate isn't gonna be as high as you would get with a 20 series or 30 series card. We're gonna start off with 1440p though, as that's what I think a lot of people would love to be able to play at. Initial frame rate looks to be around about 30 frames a second. So we're at a console level experience but not really what I would go for. Let's make a few changes then. We we'll go back into the graphics setting and just out of interest, we're gonna lower it down to low settings. This isn't what I would do. I would lower down the resolution, but just to see the difference that makes, that gives us around about an extra 15 frames a second right off the bat just by swapping to low. So if you are really struggling on the hardware that you're running, then actually low presets seems to work quite well. Let's lower down to 1080p though, as this is probably a lot more realistic for this graphics card. Anyway, make sure all of the settings are the same, which they are. We should now be getting what seems to be around about 55 frames a second. So on this G-Sync monitor, this is pretty much what I think you'd choose to play at. Game still looks great as well. We're dropping down a little bit now to around about 46. So I think it's become apparent straight away that this is a very demanding title. But I'm pleasantly surprised that actually our older system seems to be able to manage what is the next generation of games fairly well. So if you're watching this video running hardware like this, which theoretically I suppose you should be if uh, the odds are correct with the Steam hardware survey, then let me know down in that comment section below how this makes you feel. Do you think around about 45 frames a second, medium 1080p is what you're expecting? Is it slightly better, slightly worse? We'd love to hear from you, but it's certainly a, uh, a very interesting looking game. I think the main problem with the medium set though is that a lot of these assets seem to be particularly low quality. They do stick out quite a lot. Obviously it does increase the frame rate to nearer 60 frames a second, which is why you'd want to use it but it definitely does uh, make you wanna turn the settings up to high. I think that's fair. You can play it, as we can see, it's not a problem, but you're definitely not gonna get the best experience. And this is where our brand new RTX 3060 Ti comes in. And the thing is with this, it impressed me so much because the performance of this thing in actually a very small, quiet, and fairly low temperature package is phenomenal. And this does unlock things like ray tracing and DLSS. I think we can do a lot better than we can get with a 1060. And this is where having a case with a nice articulating door comes in handy because you can actually access your hardware without taking it all apart. Yes, bye bye uh, to Mr. 1060 and then hello to Mr. 3060 Ti. I've got to win an award there surely for fastest graphics card swap. That was, uh, that was pretty seamless. Let's waste no time though and go straight to the high preset, whack that in, make sure we're still at 1080p for a fair test and let's have a look at the difference. Yeah, there we go, that's more like it. 115 frames a second at higher settings than before in Cyberpunk. Oh yeah. Oh, that is so much better. It looks so much better as well. Everything is sharp and you can clearly see all the details in the background as well. And 100 frames a second. And obviously the key thing, I don't wanna to get too excited here. The key thing to note is that that CPU, the one you guys probably already have, has not changed. This is purely just a drop-in graphics card upgrade that as you saw took around about, what, two and a half minutes? That's not to say you won't see a benefit to upgrading your whole system as well, because as you can see now, our CPU usage has jumped from around about 50%, maybe slightly less than that before, to around about 95% CPU. So in some ways here, actually, we could probably raise the settings a bit more and actually not lose that many frames a second. So let's jump to the ultra presets, which changes quite a lot of settings there. We go back into the game and yeah, really not that much difference at all. We've dropped probably 10 frames a second there. Still feels ridiculously smooth on this setup. It really does. What about 1440p I hear you say? Well, this is definitely an area where we are now starting to get a little bit more into this game is very difficult to run territory. It looks absolutely fantastic though. There is no doubt about it that this is the best I've seen the game look. You can see way more details. This is the ultra preset still as well. So pretty much 
absolute max settings here, no DLSS or ray tracing, and we're getting around about 55 frames a second. So once more, let's go into the graphic settings and let's now enable some of that lovely DLSS goodness. And that's around about 100 frames a second once again. So if you're after, well, 100 frames a second, clearly the 3060 Ti is a very capable card and without really having to worry too much about graphical settings, you can pretty much bang them all up. But obviously there is an elephant in the room and that elephant is ray tracing. There's only one way to find out, so let's hit the on button. Let's go with reflections and we'll turn RTX lighting to medium. So not too bad actually, around about 55 frames a second. So we've lost, what's that, between 30 and 40 frames a second here in exchange for some fancy reflections, better lighting. But it's nice that you're gonna be able to tune everything really to, to get it looking how you want. DLSS to balanced. We go ray trace lighting off. And that is probably the sweet spot. This is around about 70 frames a second now with all of the fancy effects that you can expect from a next-gen game, still running at ultra settings, DLSS enabled, looks really good, so much better than it did on the 1060, and we've got all of the fluidity that comes with a slightly higher refresh rate as well, and obviously a G-Sync monitor to smooth out any sudden dips and things. If you do want to crank the RTX features all the way up to the preset of Ultra though, it is definitely doable, but you will have to turn the resolution down to 1080p. And it's here that you will run into a little bit of a limitation when you get into the city, as that CPU utilization does then start to jump and lower down the GPU utilization. But provided you're in the right sort of area of the game, I'd say that getting a constant 60 FPS is actually gonna be within the realms of possibility. And this is a prime example of when overclocking your CPU you really can help to actually increase the frame rate you're going to get in game if of course you're willing to do so. As soon as I finish this video you know I'm just going to be sitting here playing this game. You know that's what I'm going to be doing. Haven't explained that to the girlfriend yet though. She thinks we're spending time together this weekend. I'll tell you what then, this overall experience thus far has clearly showed that yes Cyberpunk is a very demanding game but you don't need to get an entire new PC just to be able to play it. Clearly, the graphics card makes such a monumental difference to the frame rate here. The only other thing to do really is to overclock this a little bit further, but also I want to put a 3080 in here and see what the difference is if you want to go super high end. It's definitely a fair bit bigger, as you can see, than the 3060 Ti. As promised as well, I will overclock the processor just a little bit more. I'll leave it on automatic voltage and I'll go to 48, so 4.8 gigahertz rather than 4.5, just to give us a little bit more headroom. It does actually look like we have the same settings as before, all lovely and saved for us. So what I'm gonna actually do now is whack this up to 4K. And yeah, actually pretty much bang on the money, around about 65 frames a second, 4K DLSS with ray tracing enabled. Not too shabby whatsoever. I'm just amazed at how different it is between like the medium preset and this ultra preset. There is such a huge difference. And our good old i5 as well is doing a decent job. We're pretty much around about 50-50, I guess, between the CPU and the GPU. They're both sort of working flat out, which obviously isn't ideal, but I mean, it really does go to show that if you are in a situation where you're debating, I don't know, maybe to get something like a 3060, um, and then upgrade the rest of your PC, or maybe just jump in and get a 3080, what's gonna be the right option? I mean, actually, I genuinely would probably rather get the more expensive graphics card and then get a CPU at a later date, because then you're just gonna have a better rig overall eventually, right? And then for the time being, you can see we're not getting any sudden jumps. This is normally what you tend to get, I guess, with uh, a lot of CPU limited circumstances. You'll find that it might go from, I don't know, like 65 frames a second down to 40, but I've not really seen any instances of that. And, and this is a very CPU demanding game, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed actually with the old i5. But the question really does go out to you guys on this one. Are you excited for Cyberpunk? And did you have a rig like we have here, where you have like maybe a 1060, an older quad-core CPU? And does this make you think twice about upgrading your entire PC when you can just grab a new graphics card, slot it in in a couple of minutes, and then as you can see, get all of the benefits really of increased frame rates. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this one. If you do want to check out parts, I guess, maybe some more of the more modern ones, you can find them linked down below. A massive thank you though for you guys for actually watching this video. I do really appreciate it. Smash that like button if you've enjoyed it because it helps out massively, you honestly wouldn't believe. If you do want to see some other PC builds to get yourself ready for Cyberpunk, if you do want to do the full lot, then you can find those in the end screen. But as I say, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.